Good afternoon to everyone. And welcome to everybody here, our guests, and everyone. And this beautiful Sabbath day, this day of rest, which we all know is a welcoming thing to have from our work and from just daily living in our society. It's nice to be away from that and to be at rest, mentally, spiritually, physically. Well, brethren, um, back on June 16th, we celebrated or observed a holy day called Pentecost. Now, in Acts 2, verses 1 to 4, which I won't read, but we all know about it, it shows what occurred and actually happened to the apostles in that upper room in Jerusalem. They were assembled together as ordered by our Messiah, Yahshua the Messiah, and they received the Holy Spirit. And it was a very powerful encounter, to say the least. Tongues of fire were lit over them, and their heads, and they were given a wonderful uh, way of understanding languages, tongues of fire. They knew all the different languages that existed at that time. It was a wonderful gift, a wonderful gift for they could go out into the world and talk the languages of the people that they were trying to tell and convince of the coming kingdom age rule. That is the good news, the gospel. So, <clears throat> This is what I want to talk about today, brethren, the character of the Holy Spirit. What does it do? How does it work? How does it work with human beings that are willing to accept it and do what's right? There are 16 scriptures that I picked out that show this, starting way back during the time of our Messiah and the apostles. I'm going to go through these 16. It would be very interesting to see how it works. That is the character of the Holy Spirit. Now, the question is, what is the Holy Spirit like? Well, first of all, brethren, it is an agent of our Father in Heaven. It comes from Him. It is for our Father in Heaven to be able to relate to and influence the minds of people who are willing to listen to Him and to do wonderful things for other people. And this is what I want to go through today, starting with number one. Let's look at, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> let's look at Book of Luke. Okay, let's go to chapter one. I'm going to go to chapter one here. I'm going to read to you verse 34 and 35. Now here's a wonderful thing. The power of the Holy Spirit from our Creator did this to Mary. And... In 34, it says, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Okay, so the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Boy, what a wonderful event that was. Now, the second thing I want to mention here is that the Holy Spirit speaks through men at various times. Let's go to Mark chapter 13, the book of Mark. <clears throat> In chapter 13, I'm going to read to you verse 11. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate on anything, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not you that speak, but the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit speaks through certain men and women too. So it does speak through men. That's another wonderful character of the Holy Spirit. The third thing, it's known to fill people, brethren, on special occasions. Let's look at the book of Luke. In Luke chapter 1, verse 41. Chapter 1 and verse 41. And it came to pass 
that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So it does come upon people, brethren, and it's known to fill people with the Holy Spirit. The fourth thing, let's look at two, Luke 2, verses 25 and 26. Luke chapter 2, 25 and 26. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. So it comes upon certain people at certain times. In Luke, again, in chapter 2, 25 to 26, uh, I should say, Father, uh, brethren, uh, of the same thing that reveals things to people also. So it comes upon certain people and it reveals things to people. Now, <clears throat> the sixth thing I want to bring out here it would actually appear in bodily, it can appear in bodily, though not human-like form. Let's look at Luke 3. In verse 22, Luke chapter 3, in verse 22. This was John's baptism of Jesus now. This is this occurrence here in the Jordan River. And in verse 22 of, cha of chapter 3 of Luke, And the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So there can appear, actually appear, people can actually see it in that form. Now the seventh item here is the Holy Spirit is, is, can be something that one could be baptized with. In Acts 1.5, if you go over to Acts, in chapter 1 where Yeshua says here for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence so these men were baptized with the Holy Spirit this is when they were they met in the upper room in Jerusalem and when those tongues of fire came upon them these 12 apostles why they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit, brethren, is exactly the same thing in the New Testament as it was in the Old Testament. Let's look at Acts chapter 1 in verse 16. Acts 1 in verse 16. It mentions here that Number chapter uh, verse sixteen, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. It was it was something in the by King David mentioned in his writings that this would happen. It was like a prophecy, so the Holy Spirit instructed him to write this sort of thing down so the people would know what was going to happen. And it concerned Judas, who betrayed our Messiah, which you all know about. Okay, now, <clears throat> the ninth thing I want to mention here is the Holy Spirit, brethren, is a source of power. It's a source of power to everyone who accepts it. Let's look at Acts 1 in verse 8. Yahshua tells us here to his disciples and those who, who believe in the Holy Spirit and want it and accept it, he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So that's in verse 8 of Acts. And there's another character of the Holy Spirit. It's a source of power. 
The other thing is, brethren, we should consider it a gift, and it is a gift. Acts 2, verse 38. Acts 2. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So it is a gift given to us freely if we want it and desire it and pray for it. So there it is. It is a gift. Now, the other thing is, which applies to, I believe, to so many people today, the Holy Spirit can be resisted. That is possible. Let's go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. I'm going to read to you verse 51. This is when Stephen accused his accusers. His accuser were really giving him a hard time, and uh, they wanted him, actually, they wanted him dead. So, but he, his accusers were accused by Stephen. And here's what he said in verse 51. He says, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, do ye do always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so do you. So they resisted. And believe me, uh, People today can do the same thing. They just resist the Holy Spirit as a gift, you know, and it's there free, but they resist it because they don't want it. They want to go their own way and do their own thing, so to speak. Now, the other thing is, in number 12 here, as a, as a character of the Holy Spirit, it bears witness. The Holy Spirit bears witness, brethren. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of our eternal Creator God, and joint heirs with Yahshua the Messiah, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. So it does bear witness. The other, now number 13, on the character of the Holy Spirit, it calls, it commissions, and it sends people to do a work. It's been doing that for a long time, brother. And let's look at Acts 13. Go back to the book of Acts 13. Acts 13 and verse 1 to 4. This is where Saul and Barnabas were commissioned to do a work. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the eternal God and fasted also, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Spirit, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. So there you have it. They were commissioned by the Holy Spirit and separated from the people that were there. And, and actually, they, they laid hands on them and sent them on their way. So they were commissioned to do a work, and they did, and they followed through with it. Also, brethren, the Holy Spirit directs work in, in quite a bit of detail. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. There's a detail to its work. Verse 6 to 7. Acts 16, verse 6 to 7.
Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they and were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they were they had come to Mysia, they essayed and went on to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by Messiah, Messiah, I should say, Messiah, they came down to Troas. Now, if we go down, one, down, excuse me, down to verse nine, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, "Come over into Macedonia and help us." So, the Holy Spirit works in various ways, brethren, and it's very powerful, and it's right to the point. It gives instructions. It tells people what to do and how to do and what to say, and it works every time for everyone that accepts it. Go over to John 16, 13, the book of John. In this particular instance, rather, number 15 that I'm pointing out, it hears from the eternal God, and it speaks what it hears to us. John 16, verse 13. <clears throat> Howbeit then when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. There's another very good point. The Holy Spirit works in that way too. And brethren, the Holy Spirit teaches. That's a wonderful thing to know. It teaches us as we go through this life. Let's look at John 14 and verse 26. John 14. The Holy Spirit teaches. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Well, brethren, these are the 16 attributes that I picked out of the Holy Scriptures concerning the Holy Spirit, what it does for us in our life, what it can do, and it's such a wonderful help to us, providing we listen and do what it says. We have to. We have to be very careful and never, never to reject it. And we can help others, too, in that respect by showing them and living the right life. So brethren, in closing, I want to say, let us all be mindful of these things that I just mentioned in the Holy Spirit. And the thing we've got to, got to remember is never resist the Holy Spirit. Pray about it. Ask him for help, because he's there. But never resist it, because the way things are in our society, there's so many things that come along in life that could get us thinking in the wrong direction, and then we resist the Holy Spirit, but pray daily that we will always understand the Holy Spirit of our Creator, which is the Spirit of Truth, and He will guide us, and He will help us to show others how to go in the right direction, too.